Great. You, you're done school already, right? You said on Well, 13th. I have one more. I won't, well, yeah, technically, I have one more assignment due on Thursday, but it's small. Oh. And so, you're taking business? Business. Yeah. Okay. And then I have one more semester, and then I'm done my five years at Trinity, so... You graduated from Delvey in 2015? 2015. 2015? Yeah. It's hard for me to remember because, you know, on this side of things, yeah. like, things go by really quickly. Oh, yeah, it does. Right? Even, like, my past five years at university has gone by so fast. You've done five years done, already. That's done amazing. Five, yeah, in April or May, I've done five years. So, right. Because like, oh, I, I saw a bunch of videos with you, and they're like, oh, fifth year captain. <laughs> fifth year? Already? Yeah. That's crazy. It's eh? nuts. It's yeah. insane. Yeah. Yeah. So 2015, uh, were you playing soccer at our school? Um, I played in grade eight and nine, I think it was. And then I hurt my knee in school soccer. Oh, okay. Um, that wasn't the best thing at that time, but. Did you have surgery or something? Uh, eventually. So crazy long story, but event. So basically I think it was grade nine, heard it during a high school soccer game. Um, and then I was told at first I tore my ACL. I'm like, there's no way I tore my ACL. Like no chance. Like this can't happen. Uh-huh. And then, so we found out I tore my meniscus at that time. And I'm like, okay, like no big deal. Came back two months, was playing. And then eventually it would start buckling like month by month. And then it would get faster and faster. In my second year of university, it like buckled pretty bad. And then it would buckle every practice, every game. And I'm oh like, goodness. okay, this is bad. So obviously something, there's more like to mm-hmm. the story. And then, so eventually I saw a surgeon. He's like, well, your ACL has been torn. That's why this has been happening. And I'm like, oh, All so technically I played on a torn ACL for four years, oh not knowing. And then I got surgery and came back stronger. So that was, so you're fine now. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. So there's, there was no long-term damage with playing on a torn ACL. I mean, later in life, it'll come back to bite me <laughs> for sure with the uh, joint issues, but uh-huh. no, it's, uh-huh. it's been fine. But at least it'll take you through the sports oh, yeah. in your life. Yeah. Yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, I remember you playing volleyball here. I did play volleyball. Because I remember giving you guys a ride to, I can't remember which school, but (laughs) Siakam or somewhere. I did play volleyball. I think it was grade eight and nine. Maybe grade 10 as well. I can't remember. Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember what grade you guys were in. (laughs) Yeah, I played a couple years at least. So it was fun. I enjoyed that. So um, high school, you you did a bunch of different sports besides volleyball. Um, there's a bit of soccer. Bit of soccer. I used to play softball, but then I quit that at grade eight. Um, didn't play on the basketball team. I would have liked to, but it was just mm-hmm. too much at the time with soccer and mm-hmm. having that multiple times a week. So, so were you in- involved with sports like all your life? Like um, when you were little? I started organized sports when I was eight. So mm-hmm. I joined like U9 soccer and then softball at the time. Um, but before that, I was always kicking the ball around in the backyard, playing with the boys. Mm-hmm. playing out in the yard but my parents asked me like do you want to join sports i'm like no like i like this i don't want to go anywhere and then finally i joined organized sports and obviously best decision at that point so did your did your parents play sports you said my you dad were playing with the boys were, yeah was the so, boys the neighborhood or neighborhood friends? neighborhood oh, okay um my brother his friends neighborhood boys um yeah i was probably like the age group around that time and you said your dad plays sports. yeah my dad played everything mm-hmm. including like badminton mm-hmm. <laughs> So, yeah. basketball, soccer, baseball, hockey, yeah, yeah, the whole shebang. Yeah. So, he was a good athlete. It's probably where I get it from. <laughs> yeah, because usually, usually somebody else in your family yeah. plays. My mom wasn't the best athlete. You. Don't yeah. tell her I said that. But <laughs> <laughs> She won't listen to this, no. I'm sure. No. <laughs> no, because I, I grew up in, like, my parents didn't really play sports, and so I, I didn't really play sports. I, I played like uh, I played a soccer actually yeah. when I was like seven or eight. Did you like it? I was horrible. <laughs> I was terrible at it. I didn't know what I was doing. No. I would just hang around and kick people's shins. Yeah, and I that's thought, usually how you know, it goes. That's pretty much how it go- <laughs> goes in grades. Uh, yeah. I was seven. I was seven and eight. Um, and then after that, oh, I remember uh, we got the uh, best sportsman like team or something like that. And that was <laughs> that's great. That's awesome. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't win anything, but we won that. Um, Hooray. You know, I had fun with the friends. It was more of a social thing for me, though. Oh, I bet. In, instead of uh, developing my ability. Um, so that worked out differently for, for yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and when did you think that, I, I want to do this, like, I want to be more competitive. and Because like, um, you are very competitive. I'm extremely competitive. Uh, probably when I joined sports, um, like, a legit team is when I was, like, okay, I, like I want to win everything and I want to win every battle. And, um, 
even playing with my brother in the yard. Like I always wanted to race him and win. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I would say probably when I was, it wasn't until I was 14 where I said, okay, this is really, this is what I want to do. Um, I want to like pursue professional soccer one day, even though like at that time it was still like a far dream away. Um, but I would say when I was 14, I went to a Canada women's soccer game at PC Place for the first time. Okay. And even before that, I'd never seen Team Canada play, which is crazy because I was already 14 at the time. Um, but I just saw like how inspiring they were. And I'm like, I want to be that one day. Like, I want to do that. Um, so Christine Sinclair was there. Yeah. And yeah. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. It was 2012. Uh-huh. So they were preparing for the London Olympics at the yeah. time. So, but before that, I always had a passion for it. Um, but yeah, 14, I really set my mind on it. Uh-huh. So. Yeah. So they say that uh, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Um, are you the same in, in other aspects of your life as well? Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, even with school, like, I, I'll admit I'm the biggest procrastinator, but at the <laughs> same time, I'm always like, I need to get this job done well, no matter, like, what timing it is. But, yeah, I would say pretty much everything in life, I'm devoted and committed and I want to do everything with excellence. Uh-huh. I can be a perfectionist when sometimes which comes to my detriment Uh um but you know what yeah i see a lot of that uh being a teacher like the kids who they don't hand things in not because they haven't done anything it's because they're trying to get it to a different level yeah which is awesome when they finally hand it in yeah um and to some extent i i tend to be like that as well that's that's kind of you know what people have noticed in me um and like you said, it can be good in some ways yeah. and in other ways, sometimes you don't get stuff done. Oh, totally. T- procrastination at its finest. But at the same time, it lights a fire under your butt sometimes. It's like, okay, crunch time, let's go. <laughs> Do you feel that because you're so involved um, in lots of different things that mm-hmm. it, it helps like to get things done? Yeah, I would say. Um, I've really grown in time management. Um, like figuring, obviously, deadline's not my favorite, but figuring out what, like how to handle all those different things that I'm doing um, and figuring out priorities. Um, yeah. I don't know. Cause, cause uh, university life is not easy. No, it's not. It's definitely <laughs> not easy. Um, it's not as hard as I thought it was going to be though, to be yeah. honest. Like I remember I was in high school and teachers were like, university is the hardest thing ever. And I'm like, Oh, <laughs> oh shoot. It's like, well, and, um, what elementary teachers tell oh, yeah. their students yeah, when they school. go to high school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. So it's not the scariest thing, but uh-huh. uh, I mean, you learn pretty quickly in your first year. I remember staying up till 4am one night yeah. when paper season came around. Cause I'd never written university papers before. You mm-hmm. don't realize how long it's going to actually take. You're like, Oh, shoot yeah but yeah i don't know it's been it's been an awesome journey at university like you've i've learned so much taking so many different classes um you really discover what you like and what you don't like Mm -hmm. um and that's what's been great obviously so you were at trinity western for the full five years Full five years yeah um and you played soccer since you got in yeah yeah um what What's the school like? Because I, I don't know much about it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, really small school. Probably, like, classes are about 30 max. Oh, maybe good. sometimes 50, mm-hmm. um, but usually 30. And then getting into your later years, like, you could be in a class with only 15 people. Mm-hmm. So I really love that aspect of, like, getting to know your professors more. And my coach always says, like, when you're, when he's recruiting players, your, your prof will know your name. So either you come to class or you don't, and he'll know your name. Yeah. So yeah. no skipping classes, obviously. But yeah. Um, so, yeah, small small school, great community. Um, I love that about Trinity because you can walk by and, like, see anyone you know, and you just, like, ask how their day's going. And, like, people want to actually, like, intentionally get to know you and, like, uh-huh. know how you're doing. Um so yeah, it, it's, it's you amazing. went from a like a really small high school, really small high school, <laughs> to yeah, a really small to a small college, year. yeah, yeah. So that that's pretty good. You've yeah. had a good. No, I've I've loved it. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I remember going to UBC and there'd be like 500 oh, people yeah. in, in, in a yeah. lecture hall, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, not like that at Trinity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Definitely a lot different. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, it's been awesome. So obviously it's a religious college yep. and that yep. has a huge role in your life. Yeah, it does. Uh huh. So, I mean, originally I never came uh, to Trinity for the Christian um, aspect. I was always, it never bothered me or like um, turned me off because I know a lot of people that can, but I was like, okay, I want to go play um, 
for the soccer team because obviously the team was amazing at the time had won mm-hmm. like five national championships in the past nine years um at that point and i'm like i want to be a part of a championship team and want to like continue growing and then i went for a visit and i was like holy cow this team is awesome great team culture coaches are amazing and i'm like okay this is this is where i want to be this is where i want to go mm-hmm. um and then i mean through that i learned so much about myself i remember i had a really bad knee injury um obviously that was before when I tore my ACL, I eventually got the surgery. So I was out for nine months. And at that time, like, you're asking yourself so many different questions of, like, okay, like, who am I if I'm not a soccer player right now? Like, you know, mm. just discovering your worth. And yeah. um, through that, like, my teammates dropped you. Whoa, it's, <laughs> the lights shut off. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that was going to happen. That's weird. Here we go. Yeah. Um, yeah, through that, um, my teammates, like, helped me get through it and my coaches and the community at Trinity. And we traveled to Africa in my second year. So I was probably, like, four or five months out from surgery. So that was obviously perfect timing, too. And, um, yeah, really just asking myself, like, like, what's this life all about? And, like, what's my purpose in life? And what's my plan? And um, I discovered that through a relationship with God and Jesus. And before, I had no idea, like, what that meant and what that meant in my life. And then... Wait, so... And, like, were your parents religious? No. 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 Well, so, okay, so I come from a a Lutheran traditional background, okay. which is, like, my family's history, but yeah. um, no, I don't come from a faith-based background. Okay. So, so you discovered that while you were yeah, there. Yeah, I did. It's well, been, pretty obviously, the greatest. Um, yeah, I saw videos of you, um, what's, you being baptized? Yeah, I was is baptized that, yeah. last year, so that uh-huh. was amazing. I mean, technically, I was baptized as a baby, but... Oh, you were. Um, okay. So I was. So that was probably pretty traditional for my family at the time. Right. Um, living in a Norwegian background, there's a lot of Lutheran traditions. And then mm-hmm. so I was baptized and obviously um, didn't really know what that meant or how that fit into my life. And it's kind of crazy how everything's come full circle. Uh-huh. Um, so, when it, yeah, this past year, I was like, I would love to get baptized and share that with my friends and my family. And uh-huh. yeah, so that was amazing. Cool. Yeah. So it's been quite a road. It has been. It's been insane. <laughs> So not only did all the soccer stuff happen for you, but you you discovered yourself. Yep. Because that's what we do in life, right? No, we know. try to figure out our, our identity, where we fit in, yeah. what are we here for, and yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so I'm very happy for you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's been amazing. Like now I realize that like soccer is just a tool. Like it's a tool to reach others and obviously mm-hmm. um, reach out into community. And when I travel to either Africa or somewhere in Europe or um, South America. It's about how do we use the gifts that we've been given to um, impact the lives of others. So that's been amazing. So when did you find out about your award? Yeah. So I found out about Wait, my... Wait, you're... you're um, is it, let me get this straight. U Sports Canada West Athlete of the Year so, okay. for soccer, right? Yes. Okay. So I got... First, I got Canada West um, Player of the Year. So there's obviously different divisions across Canada. So we play mm-hmm. with Canada West League. And so that puts me forward to... Um, have a chance at winning it for a U sport, which is all of Canada. Um, so I found that Canada, I was Canada West named Canada West player of the year, um, at the end of October. Mm-hmm. And then there was like a couple weeks before nationals. And so that was kind of the waiting point. Um, and then, unfortunately, our team didn't make it to nationals this year, which was very heartbreaking. That was our you first. You had an excellent was, record, though. I, like, we had the most unbelievable 12, 12 season. 1 1? 12 1 1. That's amazing. Uh, or maybe 12 1 0. I can't remember. Maybe it's one of them. Um, like one of the best seasons we've ever had, like uh-huh. as a team, and yeah. probably one of the best teams that we've ever had since. I mean, I've been there. Um, so fell short in the quarterfinal, lost one nothing to UBC. That was a heartbreaker. Obviously, UBC is our biggest rival, mm-hmm. so never mm-hmm. fun ending that way. But sometimes that happens. I mean, it happens in sport, especially yeah. in soccer. Like, yeah, flukes happen, and I mean, we hit the post. Um, and then the ball actually <laughs> oh went in, the ball actually went into the back of the net. What? So there was a, yeah. So the field that we were playing at in Edmonton, um, the nets were a little bit different. They were pretty shallow and they had, um, crossbars that went across the tops of the net. Okay. So usually there's not those bars in the net. Yeah. So one of my teammates, um, kicked the ball and one of, it went off one of their players' heads, went into the net, hit the bar, went back out, but the ref couldn't see it properly and we're like that's that's it's a goal that's in the net and even some coaches oh were on the other goodness. side and they're like yeah you guys actually score and this wasn't like the last minute or no. two of the game yeah so that's why it's like another job you're like you know when you actually tied the game but i mean it happens in sport it's cruel no replays nope yep so that was sad but anyway so didn't make it to nationals but i was then told that i needed to go to nationals 
um, because I was up for uh, obviously a couple of awards. Um, So I got. Wait, you um, were told that you need to go. Yeah, I was told I need to go. So somebody needs something. Yes. Okay. So, but so automatically, if you're um, player of the year in your division, Mm -hmm. you automatically are on the first team for all Canadian. So I knew I was going anyway. I was going anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, But I was told, yeah, you're up for player of the year. Um, so then we traveled, there was a few teammates, my coach, and we traveled to Victoria for nationals, um, went to the banquet. My parents came. So I'm like, okay, well, my parents are coming. So mm-hmm. obviously that's another sign that something <laughs> might be up. So they got, somebody invited them. Yeah. My coach invited them. Okay. So get to the banquet. Um, we're sitting at this VIP table right at the front and I'm like, okay, <laughs> another <laughs> sign maybe. Um, and then the event started and... Um, they announced my name and I was shocked, <laughs> obviously. Um, I don't know. It was really surreal. Did you have to give a speech or yeah, something? Yeah, I did. I did. I didn't really prepare very well, but uh-huh. I mean, it all just came out Oh yeah. when it did. And You're the captain. <laughs> Gotta be used to talking. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it wasn't terrible. Um, yeah, I don't know. Obviously, yeah, I was really surreal, really grateful, really blessed. And yeah, never in a million of years... Million years. That's that isn't even a word. <laughs> Million years. Um, what I thought that would have happened. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy ending on my um, five years like that. I can see you're pretty excited about it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's it's great. I mean, I'm humbled. Humbled, obviously, at the same time. But uh-huh. um, it's really special. I mean, obviously, those opportunities don't come around lots. So. So how how do they how do they choose? Like, what's the process? So, um. I mean, it, obviously you have to be an established player, but, um, I mean, stats can help you obviously. Mm-hmm. And this year I was fortunate enough to score uh, 14 goals and break the, That's the scoring record. record for Trinity. Yeah. Um, I, I scored the 14th goal and I had no clue I broke the record. So after the game uh-huh. they announced it, I'm like, Oh, like why? I didn't even know there like, was a record. <laughs> like, wow. Um, so yeah, that was pretty crazy. Um, so obviously that helped my case. For, That's a, like a season record. Yeah, season Amazing. record. Um, yeah, that helped my case. And um, I'm an attacking midfielder, so I'm not a forward. So obviously it's more rare for midfielders to score that many goals. Mm-hmm. Um, but that, yeah, it was just it all came together. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I mean I would have traded it any day um, for my team to have gone to nationals. Like I, I honestly would have because um, that was heartbreaking. And, like was so crappy being there with right. all my team. Yeah. Um, and obviously those experiences are like way more meaningful, but I mean, still really grateful, obviously. <laughs> but I, I, I think probably, you know, because you were honored, the team was honored as well. Right. Yeah. That's a great way of looking at it. So. Yeah. Because I mean, they played a part in your 14 oh, goals. Yeah. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. I mean, not I, an individual I, sport. No, it's not. It's a team award. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. So yeah, really honored and, I'm sure they were very happy for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I would hope. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I have awesome teammates. Yeah, it's crazy. Being captain was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, I was captain for three years, my last three years. What um, does a captain do? <laughs> what are you responsible for? That's a great Why question. Why do you have the C? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I mean, I think it's different for every team um, and every coach and what they're looking for in a captain. Um, but I would say my main role was obviously being able to bring the team together, um, whether that was through ups and downs. Um, I would say you have to know how to lead, um, but like know how to lead true to yourself. And that's the biggest thing I learned Mm because obviously so many people want different things. They either want you to like be an organizer or um, yeah, obviously communicate in different ways or be a rah, 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 or Mm -hmm. so many different things. But I would say the biggest way I led was by example, and I was always the hardest worker on the field, or at least I strive to be the hardest worker on the field, um, whether that was in training um, or games. And yeah, I was I was I was probably a silent leader, um, but firm when I needed to be. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And how how did you how do you think you learned that? Like, were you captain? In the first year? No. no. So after my first year, I joined the, we had a leadership team at that point. Okay. Um, There's about five of us, a couple of seniors and um, a couple of younger players because they wanted to grow the next leadership team. Mm-hmm. Um, and then going into my third year, I was named captain, um, which was crazy, obviously, at the time because I was so young. I had people yeah. older than me. So that's obviously really hard in itself because yeah. you have people older than you who. Yeah. <laughs> that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, I can imagine. But, yeah, I don't know. You always want to, like, cater to everyone. And, um, well, obviously I, they saw something in you. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, probably, probably in the sense that I led by example and always, like, laid my heart on the field and yeah, play with my heart on my sleeve. Mm-hmm. Um, I was always w- willing to give it all for the team. So, um, yeah. And I think the main thing on our team is servant leadership. So even coming into the team in my first year, I saw like, usually when you go on different sports teams, it's always like rookies get the balls or, mm-hmm. um, do this, do that. But yeah. it's a lot different at Trinity and on our team. Um, it's a servant, servant leadership and a servant culture. So the, the seniors will be grabbing the balls and, um, Trying find a way, trying to find ways to help the rookies out and the younger players. So it's like a reverse, right. yeah, style of leadership. Obviously, um, like that. and I learned that yeah. really early on. Um, and obviously, I wanted to carry that on and show younger teammates that as they came in. Um, mm. I don't know. It was a really natural like transition um, into that role. And each year, it was kind of like a new kick at the can mm-hmm. um, with like learning what I've learned from the previous year. And obviously, there were so many ups and downs, um, but. Yeah, I was amazing, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. Mm-hmm. It was so special. So, so obviously, you learn to be captain through experience. Yeah, hundred percent. That's the only way to do it. Probably, you had a lot of role models. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, is it something like it takes a certain character to be that that person? Yep. Right. Yeah. And, and do you feel that maybe it came from even earlier on? In for, your sure. Life? for sure. For sure. Um. I would say a lot of people when I was younger built into my life um, and me as a leader, as a young leader. Um, and incur- like, I remember my grade six and seven teacher and he was Mrs. Jones. Uh-huh. She teaches at Hellings now. Uh-huh. Um, but she always inspired me. Um, obviously she inspired us to dream big and she always said, you, you guys were, you guys are world changers and you'll change the world one day. Um, but she was great at building into us as young leaders and took us to like we day and yeah. stuff like that. So um I was encouraged at a really young age mm-hmm. that I, and I was told that I had something special. So obviously wanted to harness that and continue to grow that as I got older. And yeah, I would say it started, started young. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Do you, do you teach little kids? I do. Yeah. You do. So I coach, um, a couple, um, different teams and academies, um, yeah. related to both buying team and then a couple teams in our human Burnaby. We run an academy on Friday nights there. Um, they're probably like ages six to like 14 or 15. Uh-huh. So all the ranges. Um, uh-huh. But I love that. Yeah. So fun. I mean, obviously giving back to the community in that way and everything that I've learned. Um, and these kids look up to you and it's, it's yeah. so awesome to see. Yeah. So the other day I received this drawing from a little girl. Oh, it was so cute. She came up to the field and we had these player cards this year that our team had created um, and gave them out of games. And the <laughs> Burnaby team had come up to the game and got my player card. It's like trading cards? Yeah, trading cards. Oh, and then the so girls cool. would like sign it. Oh, wow. And then so I guess I hadn't signed a card that a girl had gotten. So she came yeah. up to me on the, on the field in Burnaby and was like, can you sign this? And yeah. give me like a little photo. It was adorable. <laughs> so like just those little moments, you're like, wow, like you don't realize the impact that you can have on people. So yeah, it's crazy. Cause it seems like you, you'd be really good at that kind of thing. Like passing on, like you're the team captain. So already you're <laughs> influencing people and being yeah, a role model. I love it. I love coaching with too. kids. Yeah. yeah. So hope, that might be in the future one day. Yeah. Definitely. So can you tell us a little bit about Africa? Mm-hmm. Cause I think you mentioned that you, you came here for a thanks for giving one time and you were, you were mentioning you were going. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think I did. Yeah. Um, Wow. So that was in my second year. So that was three, three years ago now, probably. Um, so we first went to a country called Benin or Benin, as some people say. So it's a really small country in Africa. Mm-hmm. Um, and the poverty there was insane. So I'd never been out of North America before at that okay. point. So that was going from like zero to 100. Yeah. yeah. Shocking. <laughs> so yeah, shocking. Uh, we got out of the airport. And I remember seeing like these two men with like rifles standing I guess oh, really? security guards. I'm like, whoa, like this place is scary. Oh, that's really shocking. <laughs> so I was obviously like terrified at first. <laughs> and there's begins. someone like yelling at me about my luggage. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't speak your language. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> so it's very stressful to start off with. Okay. But I was there with all my teammates and my coaches. So there was like 35 of us. So it was totally fine. Mm-hmm. Um, then we stayed in like this like compound area. It sounds weird, but it was like this like fenced in kind of house with was, like it, was the idea because you were with your fam uh with your teammates yeah 
were you going there for a match or why were you there? So we were going there um, for a couple of reasons. We wanted to build water wells um, for our communities. Okay. So we went to like a number of different villages um, and obviously saw them like saw the impact of the water wells and what they did for their families. And so we raised some money um, and then helped build water wells for them. And then we built actually um, a couple church, small churches, which really? it was kind of funny. It was made out of um, like these probably like skinny sticks or logs. And then with like a metal sheet as okay. a roof. And so that okay. was their church. Oh, okay. So it was very interesting. Uh-huh. Um, and being a part of building that, but, um, yeah, we just went to love on kids and obviously like going there, we think we're going to like impact all these people, but we come home being so much more impacted ourselves and mm-hmm. seeing that. Um, but some of my favorite moments were like obviously building those like churches or water walls, but at the same time, like we would have a soccer ball with us and all the kids from the villages would just come out and start chasing you with the ball. And then we'd head over to like a soccer field. Um, that was just like bone dry dirt. Um, and we'd have like the funnest time, even though we didn't speak the same language. Like they spoke French, but a different right. dialect of French. So even like my oh, teammates who spoke okay. French didn't understand what they were saying. Oh, so really? yeah, but a ball just like united us and brought so much joy. And even though they had so little, like they had so much joy. So, and everybody plays soccer on the yeah. continent. Yeah. Right? It's, it's a yeah. universal sport and a universal yeah. language. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. pretty amazing. It was amazing. So yeah. And so you, your whole team went there to, yeah. to, as a mission to, yeah. to build these things. Yep. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that was awesome. I mean, that yeah, it's it's a great thing for a team to experience. You obviously bond together um, mm-hmm. and draw closer together mm-hmm. as a team. Um, and even after that, we went on a kind of like a fun tourist time. Um, we went to South Africa afterwards, mm-hmm. um, and then we went on a safari. So that was amazing. Really neat. Really cool. Um, what did you see? We saw the big five. So. Saw all the, like the elephants, oh, okay. the giraffes, yeah. Um, so we had to split into two vans, but like some people saw some of the animals and some people didn't, so we were kind of mad, like, "Oh, you got to see the giraffe? We didn't get to." <laughs> you never know. But, yeah, it's you not never know. Disneyland. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. um, but then after we went to Benin, we went to Swaziland. So I don't know if you've ever heard of Swaziland. Yes, I have. Okay. I've heard of it. I don't know okay. much about it. So that's tiny, small country right beside South Africa. Mm-hmm. Um, so we went to a little community called Bulembu, and that's an orphanage. So. There, it was a lot different, but it's the same trip. So Benin had like material poverty. Kids don't have clothes, have nothing. Then we went to Balembu where the kids have clothes. Um, they have teaching, they have schooling, but then obviously they don't have a family, don't have those parents. So it's so they were, a different like, kind right of poverty. Beside each other. There were no. So no. Benin was like north. Oh, okay. And then Swaziland was south. Okay. So yeah. I think it was like a three or f- maybe a four or five hour plane ride, I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, going there was crazy too. And the kids actually spoke a little bit of English. So oh, okay, really? that was really cool. Um, got to play some soccer games with them uh-huh. and organized a few like little soccer academy practices. And uh, we actually played against a boys team at the time. Uh-huh. And that was amazing for them because uh, they had never played in front of a crowd or anything before. And so all the kids uh-huh. from the villages and community came down. And That's cool. Yeah, that was amazing. So it was really awesome. Yeah. So uh, since then you've you've been to you said you've been to South America mm-hmm. was that also with the team or by yeah yourself? with the team oh, okay yeah so we've been to Paraguay and Peru is it something they do every year um pretty much so our coach will try so my coach owns a nonprofit or runs a nonprofit called mm-hmm. Team Up um and so he'll take groups every reading break it might be like a small group like five or six people and we'll mm-hmm. go to Paraguay or Peru um. And then we'll try to do team trips every two years. So okay. that'll lead to either probably Paraguay, Peru, or somewhere like Africa or Guatemala. He's taken teams all over the world. He's been to like 86 different countries, which is insane. That's awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. It's so more than just soccer. Oh, yeah. That's our motto. Yeah. Our, really? motto our motto is more than soccer. Okay. So, yeah, that's funny you said that. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, that's really funny. So we've been to, yeah, Paraguay and Peru, and um, those places in itself were so awesome like the community in Paraguay we we're connected to a church there and they're just so loving and like so willing to like yeah get to know you and like serve you in every way but obviously we want to go and serve them so we're serving each other and um mm-hmm. yeah I don't know it's it's awesome and all the kids play soccer there obviously they love playing soccer um so we'll run like sports camps for them mm-hmm. um and then in Peru it's a little bit different we go to a uh, kind of a city, a district. It's called Manchai. It's just out of Lima. Mm-hmm. And so this is probably the most insane thing I've ever seen. You, So Lima is like all developed. Um, 
I mean, nice fancy cars everywhere you go. And then you go like 35 minutes outside of the city and you're in um, a place called Manchai and it is bone dry. Mm. Some people call it Death Valley. Mm. Um, and these people ha- don't have houses. They can be evicted at any time. Um, they live in um, pretty much shacks made out of tin and metal. Mm. Don't have running like water systems. Um, and we go there and build um, these gardens for families and through these gardens, um, it helps them, like, obviously be sustainable and, like, provide vegetables and fruit that they can obviously sell to, like, local community members or feed their families. Um, and then, so, yeah, that's one of the main things we do in Manchai um, and then help run soccer academies there mm-hmm. um, for the kids. And so that's been really, really, really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So many different things. Well, yeah, and, and things you realize when you, mm-hmm. like, traveling, I, I've always thought that it's the best form of education. Oh, 100%. Because, like, you really get to know yourself, you get to know oh, yeah. what other people are like, and yeah. you go, as long as you have an open mind, yeah. um, and you you get to see, because you always hear, like, some people look at the media, and they hear things, like, uh, about dangerous places, mm-hmm. or things that, oh, I better not go there, <laughs> Yeah. Um, but um, there's just so much else that's going on there, oh, there's 100%. people who are lovely people, who are, oh. who are just stuck yeah. in rough situations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what I found is like going to these places is the people are so, so loving. And even though they have so little, they're so grateful for what they have. And then you come back home and you're like, I remember going to Africa and we had to bucket shower because obviously you don't have much water there. Right. So we're filling up the water in the morning and then showering when we came back home with like the water we had saved in the buckets. Um, And so obviously that made me more mindful of like the water I'm using back home. And I remember coming Mm. back home and being so angry that like my family was showering longer. So (laughs) at the same time you come home, you're like, okay, how do I find this balance of like sharing? Cause you want to come home and share your experiences with everyone. But Uh like at the same time, you can only truly share that with the people you went with because no one will actually understand what you experienced. So it's that, it's that balance. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Plus, I mean, we, we are able to. To use water here differently I know. than they are, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's not like you're going to come back home nope. and start bucket showering. No, no. <laughs> no, yeah. no. It's just, it's just um, you know, they're they're less fortunate there. Oh, yeah. And it does make you more, uh, gives you more humility. And, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So. Very humbling. Such a great experience. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. So you've been taking business uh, for five years at Trinity. Yeah. <laughs> Trinity years. Western. Yeah. Uh, what are your plans with that? Like, what what kind of what courses have have you been taking, mm-hmm. and what what is interesting to you? Yeah. So Trinity is a liberal arts school. So meaning you have a core curriculum, and you take that certain core plus like the classes that you want to take. Um, so through that, I discovered obviously I love business. I went in for business originally, um, mm-hmm. but then I discovered that I really like marketing. Mm-hmm. So I've been doing marketing um, for the past. Th- two or three years I've been taking a couple marketing classes. So really you only need four classes to specialize in your specialization. Okay. So I've taken the accounting, the finances, um, global business, none of that like super interested me. So I'm like, okay, market marketing is the way to go. I'm a very creative person too. So uh-huh. that's where I found that would be um, most successful and I would enjoy that the most. Uh-huh. So, and, and marketing, not advertising or is no, that? Not no, not advertising. Yeah. 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 So what, what is it about marketing that you enjoy? Um, I would say helping, obviously there's so many different aspects to it, but my dream would be to help obviously different organizations, um, get like their mission out there and what they want to achieve. Um, another class I've actually really enjoyed taking is digital design. So Mm -hmm. that is, I found has really helped me with my marketing, Mm -hmm. um, and I've been working with um, Team Up, the nonprofit that my coach um, runs and being able to help them start their new organization has been really rewarding. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen that all play out, and I'm like, okay, I can use these gifts um, in a certain way, and so that's been really special. And I'm like, oh, I really have a passion for this. So, yeah, I'm still discovering, still learning, still really new in it. Um, but yeah, plus, like nowadays, there's so many different forms of oh. media that oh, you can exploit. Totally. It's, yeah. It's amazing. And yeah. even, even nonprofits and yeah. like for myself, like doing this podcast, mm-hmm. podcasting is, has really blown up. For sure. Um, there's all these ways that you can share your, your ideas or your yeah. mission or your whatever with other people. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, nowadays it's, it's very different from how it used to be. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. But still it like people... A lot of people don't know how. No, I know. Right? Yeah. And it really annoys me, especially living in Vancouver, 
like something could happen, like a huge event. And then I'll hear about it after it's done. I'm like, how come I, <laughs> yeah. how is it that I live here and I didn't know about this? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's such a bummer. So yeah, <laughs> something's going on. That's like the word is not getting out. Yeah. Um, something's been missed. So for sure, we definitely need people in yeah. that field. Oh, totally. Totally. Yeah. It's been really fun too. I've been able to run my team social media, um, page. Mm-hmm. So like our Instagram, mm-hmm. um, that's been fun mm-hmm. having that, using that as a creative outlet. Yeah. Um, I remember taking that over and being like, okay, I want, cause obviously you see other teams and you're like, wow, this is, they have an awesome Instagram. Yeah. Like yeah. And they're really hyping that up and it like looks really cool, obviously, uh, yeah. even though there's many more important things, but, um, being able to grow that and develop that has been really enjoyable and really fun. So, uh-huh. yeah. I, I, it, the social media at this school has defaulted to me as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, cause That's awesome. I, I was, I created an account for us for Instagram and, and Twitter and everything early on. Yeah. Cause I, I was like, why aren't we using this? Right. Other schools are. Right. So I started that and I tried to pass it on, but nobody seems to want to take it. <laughs> so whatever time, you know, I have, I yeah. just go on there and yeah. try to make sure people know what we're doing and stuff totally. like that. It's interesting. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It is. And, and it's interesting also because you can strategize like what times of the day and. Oh, I know. There's and, so many uh, different aspects. Yeah. And what you put out there and how you say things and, yeah. you know, how you, yeah, there's so many aspects to it. Totally. It really is an art. It is an art. <laughs> yeah. It is an art. <laughs> yeah. Um. So what are you looking forward to? Yeah. So obviously graduating in May, um, that'll be exciting and mm-hmm. scary at the same time. Another chapter is coming to an end, um, but a new journey is coming up. So I would love to go play pro um, in Europe. So that's the plan right now. Yeah. Super, really? Yeah. Super exciting. Um, don't know where yet, but I've been looking um, probably in England. We went there in preseason in August, made some connections there. Um, so obviously that would be the easiest with the language barrier because wow. there's no barrier there. Yeah. <laughs> Apart from their accent, some of them you can't understand. <laughs> um, Where'd you go in England? Uh, we went to Birmingham, which uh-huh. people would be like, why would you go to Birmingham? Um, and then we went to Liverpool. Um, that was amazing. Of course, yeah. So we stayed a week in Liverpool, a week in Birmingham, and then we went to a Liverpool game at Anfield, and that was, wow, incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we went to London for the la- past two days before we came home. Mm-hmm. So just to do some sightseeing and... Mm-hmm. catch a little bit of that before we yeah came home so yeah england or germany i'm open at really anything right now gotta get your foot in the door somewhere start the journey that's amazing yeah you have some exciting things coming i up. do <laughs> nerve-wracking scary exciting all the rest so well, nerve-wracking because you just don't know right no yeah you don't no. know and you're literally just it, moving away and right you're just it's so unknown when you get there obviously and so many so many um new experiences and new things to learn oh 100 percent. yeah and i've heard the soccer culture obviously over in europe is very cutthroat um <laughs> i mean it's people's lives over they there take it very they take seriously it very seriously <laughs> so uh-huh. i mean it's amazing though yeah i mean i remember going to that liverpool game at anfield and be like wow these people like are so passionate uh-huh about like one team this is and you'll go we ran a couple of sports um camps for little girls in england too uh-huh. and they're asking like what team do you support and i'm like ah oh. <laughs> it's very important like it's so yeah. important to them and they're all wearing their little jerseys and i'm like wow we don't yeah. even have this back in canada like it's not yeah. that big of a deal no. to any of us back here i mean mm-hmm. to me maybe but mm-hmm. yeah it's crazy the differences in cultures so mm-hmm. yeah i don't think i don't think we even i don't think most people even take hockey that seriously. No. There's very no, few. No, yeah. Right? It's so true. Yeah. Um, whereas in other countries, even the States, yeah. like sports is huge. Oh, it's, it's, there. Massive. it's massive. Whether it's high school or yeah. college or whatever, right? Yeah. Wave your arms. The lights just went <laughs> out again. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, we have to save energy at the school and this is how we have to do it. Oh, it's so funny. And we're starting to turn off the heat now. Oh, no. <laughs> Winter. Yeah. It's the worst. Yeah. This makes you think about other countries that you yes, do. Yes, yes. <laughs> there are cool. blackouts. There are blackouts. It's a lot warmer in those I remember, now. I remember going to Cuba. Um, this was, I think I was in like second or third year of university. Yeah. Went with my buddy. Um, and that was a shocking cultural experience for me. Um, and we backpacked around. We didn't stay oh, at wow. like a resort yeah, 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 or yeah, something yeah. like that. <laughs> we backpacked and went around Cuba by bus and train and oh. stuff like that. So it was kind of cool. And uh, yeah, like Havana would just black out once in a while. Oh so my we'd gosh. be sitting there and no power. 
Jeez. Everybody's just used to it. Yeah. So Barracoa terrible. on the east side of Cuba, I remember. And we were um, hanging out at this cool hotel, mm -hmm. like swimming and stuff. And then it would black out. <laughs> and then I would look over because we were on the hill. Yeah. We'd look down and... All of a sudden, every window you'd see a light flickering. Oh gosh! So they would they would know they would have their candle ready and they would light it and candle that's lighting. just <laughs> that's just how they do things. Yeah, then. yeah, crazy. Yeah, but here we're just trying to save some energy. I know, I know. love it. Because <laughs> yeah. we in, in class we we talked a little bit about climate change and right. the climate strikes and stuff like that and. I told them you, you got to realize in some countries that's not on the top of their priority list. No. Right? Yeah. It's so amazing that we we can think about that. Oh, totally. But in other countries, it's like food, yeah. shelter. Yeah, the basics. The basics. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, um, London's lo London's a lovely city. I've it been is. There too. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, we didn't get to see um, the Big Ben because okay. it was being under construction. So, literally, it just looks like a whole bunch of bunch of scaffolding uh -huh. um so that was a little disappointing but that's okay saw the london eye uh, Buckingham did you go, Palace. did you go on the london eye no a couple okay. of teammates did I yeah didn't. um yeah we did a lot of sightseeing that day museums yep museums yeah. art museum um uh, churches yep churches cathedrals yeah it's, it's amazing in europe the churches because yeah, I just, I remember just, you could just walk through a church. Yeah. And you'd be like walking over really famous people. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> They're like everywhere. Yeah. There's dead people everywhere. No, I know. <laughs> like, what do they call them? The catacombs? Like, under a lot of, yeah, I, yeah. that's what, when we went to Peru, we went to Cusco. Um, and there was a, a lot of different, um, I think it was cathedrals. So I can't remember where we went. Um, but they had all the catacombs like underneath the churches. And oh, like, yeah. Whoa, whoa, this is crazy. Did you, did you see anything or were there just, um, uh, well there was so you would like walk over like a certain um part of the i can't even remember if it was a cathedral what it was um but you would see like bones oh okay yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. there would be like a couple vents and they you would see like stacks of bones that like underneath so you could go and pay to see that and i'm like i i care not to <laughs> i think you like i don't really enjoy that <laughs> see that in Paris too, the Paris. Oh catacombs. yeah, the catacombs. Yeah, yeah just, I've never been there. I'm just my, getting weird. My, yeah, we were talking about <laughs> my wife and I were on honeymoon. We we're th talking about doing that, but I'm like, it doesn't sound like a honeymoon thing. No, no. <laughs> no, it's crazy too. Even going to England, learning about um, like all the major clubs, um, uh -huh. the soccer teams, and apparently all of the big stadiums were and teams were built out of church teams and church leagues. So that's how they all came really? about. Yeah, I had no idea. They're all built from churches. No way. Yeah. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. And then so it's funny. You'll go to a couple games and they'll have like a few verses from the Bible like scrolling down on their things and a whole bunch of people don't clue, clue into it. But I'm like, oh, that's really interesting. And I asked a couple yeah. people are like, well, that, that's that's where the roots come from. I'm like, wow. Like, no idea. English soccer comes from church. Yeah. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's really so, neat. Yeah, it was really neat. It yeah. was really cool. So, yeah. Um, it, have you kept in touch with anybody from Delview? Um, a few people. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. I mean, like, obviously my few close friends, um, that I went to school with for like 10, 13 years, even from elementary school, I still keep in touch with all them. Um. Now that's difficult. Elementary friends. I know. We have a really <laughs> unique group. Uh -huh. Um, there's about five of us who always, I don't remember if you remember Kristen and Megan and all them, Kristen McKee, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I'll have to look back at the pictures. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You remember, you remember all of them. Uh -huh. um, and so I still keep, keep in touch with them. Um, uh -huh. And then I'll see a few people here and there on the streets, but don't really still have any sort of big connection with them. But mm -hmm. it's funny how life moves on. Yeah. And you find your people. So, yeah. You you yeah. move on to other people. It I mean, sounds bad. But <laughs> it does sound bad, but yeah. that's just what happens. It's what happens. I know. Yeah. You move, yeah. You move apart because yeah. you get... You're, the path to just diverges. Yeah. So you're at the same school and then yeah. you go on to different things. That's true. Yeah. And everyone finds what they love and yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. It's cool seeing, like, I know, um, a couple of people, I think like Sawhill and Carly, who I went to school okay. back here with, I think they're doing yeah. a lot of like fashion stuff. So that looks really fun and cool. I'm like, wow, that's exciting. Like people are onto new things, big things. And uh -huh. yeah. yeah, so sweet. And you're onto new things and uh, big yeah. things too. Yeah. yeah. Different. Cool. Well, 
I, I hope I wish you all the success in, in Europe. This is really exciting. Thank you. Yeah, um, it is very and, and do keep in touch. Of course. I do look at your Instagram because okay. it's so interesting. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> yeah. I'll, um, I'll keep posting. Keep posting yeah. your photos and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, we'll do. Um, Bring you guys along the journey. Yeah. So. And it's just so exciting to hear that somebody, anytime we have anybody come back from after graduation and you hear about what they're doing, it's, totally. it's just amazing. Yep. And, sure. and it's amazing how you've grown. I've grown immensely. Yeah. So, I mean, life does that to you. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, th thanks for coming in. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, and wish you all the best. Thank you. And have a Merry Christmas. Yeah, you too. Merry Christmas. And Happy New Year. <laughs>